हेलो फ्रेंड्स हाउ आर यू आई होप यू ऑल आर सेफ एट होम स्टे होम स्टे सेफ टुडे इन दिस ऑनलाइन सेशन आई एम टेकिंग पार्ट वन ऑफ द फंडामेंटल यूनिट ऑफ लाइफ ऑफ नाइन्थ स्टैंडर्ड द टॉपिक्स फॉर टुडेज डिस्कशन आर इंट्रोडक्शन अबाउट द लेसन डिस्कवरी ऑफ सेल ऑर्गेनस वॉट आर लिविंग ऑर्गेनिजम्स मेड अप ऑफ यूनिसेलुलर एंड मल्टी सेलुलर ऑर्गेनिजम्स प्लाज्मा मेम्ब्रेन ऑस्मोसिस एंड इट्स सिग्निफिकेंस सिग्निफिकेंस ऑफ डिफ्यूशन हाइपोटोनिक आइसोटोनिक एंड हाइपर सोल्यूशन दिस टॉपिक्स आर नॉट न्यू फॉर यू यू हैव स्टडीड इन क्लास सेवेंथ एंड एट्थ ऑल्सो सो लेट अस सी as you know that cell is the fundamental unit of life it is the structural and functional unit of life when you observe any structure of plant and animal under microscope then you will find that they are made up of cells cells are very small it cannot be seen with our naked eye we always require microscope for that so let me define cell cell is the smallest structural and functional unit of life what is cell it is the smallest structural and functional unit of life cell may be prokaryotic like bacterial cell or eukaryotic like plant and animal cell in the given figure you may observe the cork cell which was seen by robert hooke under his crude microscope now it is about the discovery of cell and its entity cell is discovered by robert hooke in the year 1665 Anton van Leeuwenhoek in the year 1671 discovered bacteria as free living cells in pond water. Nucleus was discovered by Robert Brown in year 1831. Purkinje in the year 1839 discovered protoplasm. cell theory was given by scleden in 1838 in plants and by such one in 1839 in animals virtue in the year 1855 given a statement that all cell arises from pre existing cell now what are living organisms made up of as we have earlier seen that all living organisms are made up of cells you may observe cells in onion peel or chick cell in lab under compound microscope cell varies in shape and size as you have seen in class 8th size and shape of the cells depend upon its function cells may be cuboidal polygonal or elliptical cells may be small or very large smallest cell is pplo that is pleuronemonia like organism it is called mycoplasma largest cell in the total is egg of ostrich in our body smallest cell is rbc that is red blood cells and largest cell is nerve cell which is also called as neuron you may observe in the given slide about the smallest and largest cell as well as smallest in cell in our body and largest cell in our 
body. Now let us see about unicellular and multicellular organism. As the name indicates, uni means one and multi means many. So those organisms which are made up of single cell is called unicellular. For example, amoeba, euglena, bacteria, climadomonas, yeast, etc. And when the organisms are made up of many cells and are grouped together to form tissues are called multicellular organism. For example, fungi, plants, animals. In case of multicellular organism, there is division of labor to perform different tasks of the body. But in case of unicellular organism, single cell perform all the activities of life. All the cell come from pre-existing cell. That is ominous celluli cellula. Cells which are produced from single cell may be differentiated to have different structures and functions. The given figure shows about different unicellular organism that is amoeba, euglena and bacteria. These are the figures of some multicellular organisms. Here also you may observe about different multicellular animals. As we all know that cells are made up of plasma membrane, nucleus and cytoplasm. But in case cell wall is also present. So we will read about plasma membrane. Plasma membrane is discovered by C. Nageli and C. Kramer in the year 1855. Plasma membrane is the outermost covering of the cell except plant cell. Plasma membrane separates the content of the cell from its external environment. Plasma membrane helps in allowing the entry and exist of ions and molecules in and out of the cell. It also prevents the movement of some materials. It is very thin, elastic, living and selective permeable membrane. Selective means it allows the entry and exist of some material, not all materials. And it is made up of lipid and protein. It includes nucleus and cytoplasm and helps in protection of cellular organelles and inclusion of the cell. The detail about plasma membrane you will study in class 11th. This is the fluid mosaic model of plasma membrane. Now let us see how the movement of substance takes place in and out from the cell through plasma membrane. Substances like carbon dioxide and oxygen can move across the cell membrane or plasma membrane by the process of diffusion. Here there is a spontaneous movement of a substance from a region of high concentration to a region of low concentration. So diffusion plays an important role in gaseous exchange between the cells as well as cell and its external environment. Now it is about osmosis. Osmosis is the movement of water molecules through a selectively permeable membrane. It is different from diffusion. Here the movement of molecule 
is taking place through a selectively permeable membrane. You have seen earlier that in case of diffusion, concentration gradients plays an important role. The molecules moves from higher to lower concentration, but in osmosis, there is movement from a region of high water concentration to a region of low water concentration. That is from higher concentration, from lower concentration to higher concentration through a semi-permeable membrane. Here, the semi-permeable membrane is required. So, you may call osmosis as a special case of diffusion. In the given figure, you may observe how osmosis is taking place. Concentrated sugar solution is separated by dilute sugar solution through a semi-permeable membrane. So, water molecules moves from dilute sugar solution to concentrated sugar solution through partially permeable membrane. Now, let us see what are the significance of osmosis. Osmosis helps in absorption of water by roots and root hairs. Water moves from one cell to another cell. Osmosis helps in controlling the amount of water within the cell. Osmosis also controls various physiological activities of the plant like opening and closing of stomata, splitting of fruits due to over irrigation and dehiscence of fruits and seeds for dispersal. Next is about significance of diffusion. Diffusion plays an important role in gaseous exchange of carbon dioxide and oxygen. Transport of food through phloem takes place by the process of diffusion. Loss of water from the plant is based on the principle of diffusion. Diffusion also plays an important role in moving ions and solutes from one cell to another. Now the last topic of this session is about hypotonic, isotonic and hypertonic solution. So let us see one by one. First is about hypotonic solution. If the medium surrounding the cell has a higher water concentration than the cell, meaning there is that outside solution is very dilute than the cell. So, the cell will gain water by osmosis called as endosmosis. Why? Because the water is entering into the cell from external environment. In this case, the cell will swell up. So, such a solution is called hypotonic solution. This is the figure showing hypotonic activity. The cells in flat and eventually may burst when water is transported into the cell as the solute concentration inside the cell is higher. So, water will move into the cell. Second one is about isotonic solution. If the medium surrounding the cell has exactly the same water concentration as the cell, then there will be no net movement of water from the plasma membrane. Such a solution is called isotonic solution. Here the cell will remain of same size. Why? Because there is no net movement of water takes place. In this figure, you may observe the isotonic activity. Here, amount of water transported into the cell is equal to the amount of water transported out from the cell because solute concentration inside the cell is equal to the solution outside the cell. Last topic is about hypertonic solution. 
it is just opposite to hypotonic in this case if the medium surrounding the cell has a lower concentration of water than the cell meaning there is very concentrated then the cell will lose water by exo osmosis and the cell will shrink in such case so such a solution is called hypertonic solution in the given figure you may observe that how cell shrinks as the water transported out from the cell because solute concentration inside the cell is lower so children this is about today's online session thank you have a nice day and for any kind of doubts please write your questions in comment section